So the next topic we'll be discussing is tracing evolutionary relationships. So till now we've discussed how we can, you know, determine some relationships between organisms, how through classification, right, we can determine if organisms are closely related or not. But now we'll be determining the process, how we can actually determine through different features, different proofs, different evidences, how we can trace evolutionary relationships, right? So basically, tracing evolutionary relationships involves studying organs, studying structures, studying the different parts of the bodies of various organisms, studying the organisms, and trying to find similarities between them. So when we try to find similarities between them and various other organisms, when we try to find similarities between them, ultimately we re you know try to reach to conclusions as to whether they were uh, they have any evolutionary relationships, whether they were related at some point in time, or are they related? Do they have a common ancestor? So we look into all these things, right? And how do we actually look into them? Well, there are some things we consider. So in terms of organs, let's take up organs first. Right? Organs. Now, if you look into organs, we basically, you know, have two kinds of organs, right? We have homologous organs. And then we have analogous organs, right? As we have studied organisms, we have, we have classified organs into two kinds, homologous and analogous. So homologous organs, what kind of organs are homologous organs? Homologous organs are organs like homo. We look at the word homo. Homo means similar. So homologous organs are those organs that have Similar basic structure, okay, common origin, okay, so these similar things are origin and the basic structure. But in spite of all this, they have different functions, right? They have different functions. So if we take some examples, we can have the forelimb, like for example, forelimb of man and ape. So if you look into forelimbs of man and ape, they have a common origin, obviously they have a common ancestor, and they have similar structure, but they have different functions. The forelimb of man is used to, you know, uh, it's used as a hand, right, fallen, but the ape uses it for walking. If you see, he uses it for walking. We don't use it for locomotion. We don't use it for walking, right? So that's homologous organs, an example of homologous organ, right? Next, we come to analogous organs. So this is the exact opposite of homologous organs. It is basically that it is those organs that have similar function, but different structure and origin. Right? So when organs have same structure, same functions, but they have different structures and origin, we say they're analogous organs. I'll give you two examples for this. For example, if you look at sweet potato, Sweet potato is again a kind of potato, right? It is sweet, obviously. It is a storage organ. It stores the starch content of the plant. And yeah, well, that's it. That's the function. Where is its origin? Well, the sweet potato is a stem. It's a stem uh, produce. It is produced from the stem. It is a stem of the plant. On the other hand, if we take a general potato, right? A general potato, it is a vegetable. It is again a storage organ, so it has a similar function as the sweet potato, but the normal potato is a root, so its origin is different. So though the two have similar functions, they have different origins, and even the structure is different. Sweet potato, well, it is a bit uh, you know, longer in length, if we say. Normal potatoes are a bit fatter in length. Uh, sorry, they're a bit fatter, they're a bit more... Uh, Fat, they're a bit more 
uh, bulby. So these are the things. But they have similar functions. They both store food. They both store starch. But again, their structures and origins are different. Sweet potato is a, is a stem, whereas the normal potato which we eat is a root. The next example we can take is wings of bird and bat. If we see the wings of a bird, you will see that there are feathers, okay, and you will see that their structures, they may appear same, but they are not the same. Right? The folds differ, right? A bit of the bone location differs. Okay, so all these things differ. Though they look similar in structure, but if you look at them closely, their bone arrangements differ. There is a difference in there because, you know, bat doesn't have feathers, right? It has that other kind of structure which is attached to its body. But birds have feathers, proper feathers. So there is a difference in the structure of the organs. Origin, well, again, they have different origins. Birds are uh, have originated from reptiles, whereas bats have originated from mammals. They are from the mammalian kingdom, right? So that's the thing. Another thing is that they have similar functions in spite of all this because birds, again, use them for flying. Bats, too, use their wings for flying. So though they have similar functions, their structures and their origins differ. Right? And hence we've put, to, put them under analogous organs. So this is the thing. When we try to study organs, right? Obviously organs which are homologous mean that those organs, organisms may be closely related. Whereas analogous organs are, uh, are you know, signs of the fact that the organisms are not related to each other or their relation is very, very distinct. Right? So that's it. We use organs to study evolutionary relationships by using homologous organs and analogous organs, right? They help us determine the origins of organisms and how their origins may be common or different. After organs come, comes another important aspect that is fossils. Now we all know what fossils are. Fossils are basically the dead remains of plants and animals, right? Dead remains of plants and animals. So again, how can we use dead remains of plants and animals to, you know, uh, study evolutionary relationships? Let's see. So if we try to look at fossils, we will see that if we find fossils in the soil, if we dig down the soil, we will see that fossils are arranged in layers. Right? Fossils are arranged in layers. So here you may find one kind of fossil. Here you may find another kind of fossil. And in this layer you may find another kind of fossil. So you can see that there are layer by layer fossils. Right? Fossils arranged in layers. So there is layer by layer formation of fossils. They form layer by layer. Now, the fossils which are above the Earth's surface, you know, which are closer to the crust, which are closer to the Earth's surface, they are more recent. Right, obviously, because they have died recently. They are, you know, much above the Earth's surface. They are close to the Earth's surface. So obviously, they are more recent. But if you look at the ones which are down below, right, just the ones here down below, these ones are older, right? These fossils are older. This can be obviously understood because they are really, really dug down onto the Earth's surface. So you can easily determine that they are much older, right? So this is fossils, how we study fossils and how we can determine how recent and old they are. But how do they help us in determining evolutionary relationships? Well, let's see. If we look at the more recent ones, right? The more recent ones shall have a closer relation with the recent organisms, with the present organisms. But the older ones will have a less close relationship because they have, you know, died long back. So they've gone, their uh, properties, their uh, characteristics are pretty much done, they will be less prominent in the population, right? 
plus we can determine which ones are closely related right and you can determine it like this if in one layer we find a particular kind of fossil so we find other kinds of fossils too we can you know kind of study and find out that if these two are related right because again they are found in the same layer since they are found in the same layer there are chances that they are related right so in this way too we can compare fossils right so this method of layer by layer um, study of fossils and eventually determining how old and new they are is what we call fossil dating right we call that fossil dating that is one way of dating fossils one way of finding the age of fossils another way of finding the age of fossils is carbon dating carbon dating is slightly different carbon dating is basically when we're looking into the carbon content right look into carbon content when we're trying to look into the carbon content then we say that we're carbon dating so let's have a look at that when we look into the fossil structures fossil content right we look into the car carbon content so look for content of carbon in fossils right and compare so we compare the content of carbon so if we have for example fossil one and then we have fossil two if suppose fossil one has x percent carbon content and fossil two has y percent carbon content if x is greater than y we say that x percent content is greater than y content then obviously we say that this f1 has less decomposed carbon right it has less decomposed carbon most of its carbon content is still present so less decomposed carbon now since its composed carbon is less decomposed it has less carbon decomposed then we say that it is more recent right because not all of its carbon content has not you know it has more carbon content in it and it, most of its carbon hasn't yet decomposed as compared to the other fossil right but if we take y we will see that there is more decomposed carbon more decomposed carbon now since there's more decomposed carbon we can say that most of its carbon has decomposed it is old so we can say it is less recent right so this is the method of carbon dating so when we're looking into the carbon content in fossils and we're comparing them then that's what we call carbon so in this way, we can trace evolutionary relationships through carbon dating or through fossil dating, also organs. So when we are writing down, let's summarize, to trace evolutionary relationships, we look at two things mainly. First is organs, two evidences. Second is your fossils. These are the two things we look at for determining evolutionary relationships. Thank you.